How's it going everybody? My name is Ryan45678 and welcome back to the 1976 Honda MR175 Elsinore restoration project. So uh, in this video we're going to be working on the carburetor. As you can see it is literally dirty. <laughs> uh, I hope the inside is better than the outside. Uh, I'm not too sure though. Uh, but anyway last time well, I don't want to say last time because it's in the middle of progress at the same time as this video, but it was working on the rubber pieces. By the time this video is up, that video will probably be done and you'll be like, yay, cool. So yeah, don't forget to leave a like on the video if you enjoy it or find it useful. Subscribe for more projects. And as always, I'll put some links in the description below, uh, like CMSNL where you can get parts and some other affiliate links to things that I use. So basically the first thing I'm going to do with this carburetor, as you can see, it is nasty. It's dirt. Uh, because this bike came from uh, a place that flooded and that's probably I mean like we're 99% sure that's why there's so much dirt everywhere and mud like inside the engine so I'm just gonna take this over to the sink I'm not gonna show you because uh, that would be boring to watch me scrub a carburetor with a toothbrush I'm just gonna clean the outside as good as I can to get some of the dirt out uh, obviously there's some on the inside that I'm not gonna be able to get like that uh, but that's the first step because I'd, I'd prefer not to introduce dirt on the inside that wasn't already there. So before I do that though, let me take some of these rubber things off. And you guys will have to help me remember where these go. Uh, that's kind of half the reason I'm making these videos, so I can remember, go back and watch how I put these, these things on. So uh, this one shouldn't be too bad. Uh, probably need a, a screwdriver or a pair of pliers to get this off though. Uh, and don't worry, I'm not going to be reusing this thing. I bought some new fuel line, so it's not going to hurt it. And I'm not, I'm not squeezing very hard. Just, oops. Uh, let me just pull the choke really quick. Yeah, that's, that's not going to work. Alright, so I, I always hate doing this, uh, using a screwdriver to pry on things, but in this case, it seems like the best option. I mean, really, it just needs to be freed. I don't. I think that might be a barb, though, so it's just hard rubber stuck to a barb. So you can see there's kind of a gap forming as I pull it, so maybe if I could just keep doing that. If I, if I don't need to, I'm not going to use the screwdriver, but it's there. It's starting to come loose. And this is why I make these videos, because it's little things. You think, oh, take the rubber things off, done. But no, uh, it's not that simple. I'm just going to be very careful here. Push up a little bit. Uh, didn't help a whole lot. Another thing you could do uh, is you could cut this off or just use a razor blade on this end. I've done that before on like lawnmower and weed eater carbs, uh, but it's easy to scratch stuff. So if you don't want to scratch anything, I wouldn't recommend that. There we go. Just twisting and pulling really hard has done the trick. Perfect. And I believe, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this is the line that goes from the tank like that. So I will keep this on hand because it has the clip. I did buy some new clips. I don't remember exactly which ones I did and did not buy, but uh, hopefully you can see that. Uh, I'll just keep that here. And same with these. Uh, the clip actually needs to come off first. So it should be able to do by hand, yeah. Just like that. Just kind of squeeze it. Um, might be good with some pliers. Get these adjusted right. Yeah. yeah. It's not quite. It's like digging into the rubber, so that's gonna be fun. Um, yeah, it's coming off. So if I just pull and twist, like the first one, I don't even know what these two are for, honestly. This little one. And there's another one on the other side. There we go. But I will leave that on for now. Uh, the clip thingy on there. I will... Uh, this one... 
might come off or come down. I mean, not really. It's it's stuck too. So I'm just gonna pull it same way. There we go. That's off. So I think that's it. Uh, there's the choke linkage. I mean, that's all going to come apart anyway. But I think that's all I need just to wash it. Because it's going to go in, uh, in a solution. That's uh, one thing I haven't mentioned yet. So what I'm going to be doing to clean this is putting it in my ultrasonic cleaner, which is right there, and using pine saw because apparently that's better for carburetors than simple green, which can turn them black. Uh, there's a few other things, definitely some other things that will eat them, eat the aluminum. Uh, like I believe, uh, don't quote me on this, I think it was, it was some kind of orange cleaner or some, or no, it was Zep. It was Zep, uh, yeah, it might have been the orange, I don't know. Uh, but definitely make sure you're using something that's not corrosive to aluminum and that's not going to turn it colors. I'm not, still not 100% sure. I found one uh, instance in a comment thread where the pine saw, somebody said, did turn it black. So I'm going to use a pretty conservative ratio of like maybe uh, three parts water to one part pine saw and see what happens. And if it's not enough, I'll bump it up and at least I'm not ruining things. So yeah, let me go wash this off and I'll get to the rest of the disassembly. All right, I got it clean, kind of. I mean, it's not perfect, obviously, but it's way better than it was. And I'm okay with disassembling it further. Uh, this part is gonna have to be cleaned again, probably, where the choke is. It's pretty dirty. I couldn't get in there with a toothbrush. So let's go ahead and start disassembling. Let me wipe down this countertop with some paper towels first. Okay, so I think the way I want to tackle this is kind of take some of these parts, outside parts off first, like this, uh, I'm pretty sure this is the idle screw. So what I'm going to do is you can take and turn this all the way in, lightly seat it, and then just while you're doing that, count how many turns you went in, and that's how many you'll have to put it back out. So we'll do that really quick. Uh, assuming it'll turn one half, one one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five, five and a half, six, six and a half, seven, seven and a half, eight. Okay, so it's basically eight turns, uh, assuming that this little slightly not quite all the way is just one. So we'll, we'll, we'll say that's eight. So like three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Honestly, that seems really far out to me, but I'm going to write that down really quick. Yeah, okay, so I marked that down as eight turns out, and so that comes right out like that. This will need to be cleaned, but basically, it's just an idle screw with a spring. Pretty simple, pretty gritty. So I'll put that here, uh, the outside pile, I guess. I don't know. Next, we got, I believe we have the air screw. So this is one half. Uh, one. Yeah, so there we go. That's basically one and a half turns. Yeah, so one and a half turns out for the air screw. Uh, I, I I could be wrong. It could be a fuel screw, but it's on this side, which is the where the air comes in. So I'm taking it that it's an air screw. So I will go ahead and pull that out. This one you have to be a little more careful with. Uh, this idle screw didn't actually seat into anything. 
it just kept the uh, keeps the slide up at a certain position. So okay, so I think the only remaining outside component is the choke, which we can should be able to take out with a a uh, uh, a wrench. The other option would be if this screw comes out, this little screw on the the lever then that might be able to enable us to take it apart. All right, so it looks like it's 14 millimeter. Let's see if I can do this with a wrench. Uh, it does have like some locking tabs that somebody's already bent down. Uh, so those that won't be in the way. So just carefully. <clears throat> so that's not really working. Let me see if I can get this. Uh, the screw off. I don't think it wants to. Oh, uh, it actually broke loose when I did that. I thought I broke it uh, or damaged it, but I did not. So it came loose. Yay. I just didn't even think to check because it looked like it was still solidly stuck on there. So uh, honestly, I hate anything where you have to get a wrench on something because boxed in wrenches or whatever you call it open end wrenches, whatever you call these, they're they're really easy to round stuff off on. So that should come off pretty much all as one and I'll leave it for the most part. Uh, just like that. Yeah, that's not too bad. It's kind of hard to see in there. Uh, but yeah, it's just a little little passage. So that is the choke. That will go in there at some point to get cleaned. We'll have to be careful and line this up, but it really just goes flat against that, I think. Uh, so yeah, that's that, that's the choke. Now we should be able to open up the body of this thing, take the float, or the, the bowl off. So let's, uh, oh, there was a spring in there. Was that in, I'll have to look at the parts diagram, but I think that came out of this hole, the air, air screw hole. Yeah, definitely, because that doesn't really come out on its own. So that's where that came from. Keep that all together. And we'll get a JIS bit, Japanese industrial standard for these screws, and we'll get a socket for this big bowl nut. We'll do that one first. Yeah, so the cool thing about one of these things is, or at least I think, is you can just, if you don't know what size to do, it's not that size, so fits that size, fits that size too. So it is definitely a 17 millimeter, that's huge. That is freaking huge. So we'll get that on there. And see if we can pop it off. And this one we have to be very careful because it looks like it's brass and it's very shallow. So really, if you can, you'd probably want to have something under your socket to keep it straight. Like, like another socket, not quite. The other thing you can do is use an impact gun, which I might do. Uh, although honestly, that's probably not a good idea on brass like this. So. If I can, I'm gonna, gonna try and keep it uh, like that. So let's let's hope that I can do this without breaking anything. Okay, I think that did it. Yeah, that was I was worried about nothing, so. Go. So it's probably full of water now because I washed it. Uh, it should not have gas in it because this thing has been sitting. Ew. That is disgusting. Dang it. I, must, I was hoping the inside wouldn't be that bad. <laughs> but look at that. That's. Ugh. That is really bad. Especially the nut, the bowl nut. Okay. Yeah, that's that's not a good sign. 
So let's let's grab our JIS bits. Dang, I should have known when I when I shook the thing and it sounded like flakes of something moving. Um, see, it looks like these are actually pretty small. Uh, that's actually that's not JIS, is it? Yeah, this is. If you don't know what JIS is, it's Japanese Industrial Standard, and you pretty much have to use it on uh, on uh, these old bikes. Whenever you have a what looks like a Phillips head screw, it's not a Phillips head screw. Trust me. If you try to act, if you treat it treat it like a Phillips head screw, you will, you will round it off. And these look like they may actually have already been rounded off. So hopefully we will be able to get them out without destroying them. We also are full of, full of dirt. So let me take care of that as much as I can. Yeah, these look pretty bad. I, I should have bought uh, some screws for this, but I don't... I did not think of it. Yeah, let's give it a shot with this one. I'm not really sure how I'm going to turn this, though. Because this thing is in the way, and I don't want to hit the... Yeah, that's that sucks. There's like almost no way to get to that with a normal screwdriver, with a normal, uh, with an impact. I might have to use a stupid Phillips, but that's obviously not the right one. Not the right tool, I mean. So that's all I have room for. Oh, it actually came out, surprisingly. Okay, let's get the other three, uh, if I can. This one is full of dirt. But if I push it in there good enough, yeah, it comes out. That's all you need is just some pressure, I guess. Uh, any other screw, like anywhere there, where there's more torque than that, or you just be were impatient, I think you would, uh, pardon the pun, you'd be screwed. You'd, I don't know, you'd have to use some pliers to get these out. But luckily, these didn't cause any problems, which really surprised me. With how they how dirty this thing is, and using a Phillips head instead of JIS because I couldn't get it in at least that one. Uh, bowl screws. I probably now that I think about it, I don't know why I didn't use the JIS driver on the ones that I could get to. I will on the way in. Although honestly, they might not even need it because they have a lock washer on them. And they weren't in very tight to begin with. And I'll probably put some Loctite. Just in case. Okay. Let me clean this area really quick so we can open this thing up. And I'll be right back. Yeah, the more I look at it, I'm honestly not even sure what that is. It looks like rust, but the only thing in there that should rust that I know of I don't even know of anything. Oh, it popped out. The floats, maybe? But that is disgusting. It, I don't know. That, that might just be fuel. That's disgusting, though. Look at that. I don't think I've ever seen anything that bad. I mean, not that I've opened up very many uh, motorcycle carburetors, as in zero. Let me get up some light on that so you guys can get a better look. That is gross. Yeah, that is that is nasty. I'm hoping that it's just fuel and water, <laughs> but it does look like corrosion up in there. It might be salvageable. I think uh, doesn't look too bad. I say that <laughs> as chunks of disgustingness fall out of it. But I mean, the corrosion doesn't look like it's eaten away the surface of the the thing. So I'm hoping it'll be fine because it's just like surface. Corrosion. I can't even see what's in there, honestly. So the bowl. Uh, I don't even know. I don't even know what this is. I'm gonna have to look at the parts manual to find out. Yeah. So normally, the next step would be taking the float off. I don't even know if that's possible. The way the way this is. Although I see, I do see one side of it. The float is supposed to come out with. I'm gonna, ugh, I'm gonna dump this in the trash really quick. 
the float has a pin and it's supposed to just come out but I don't even know where to start Let's see if I can push on one side of it no careful of the actual float so not push on that Yeah, this is going to need some work. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to like put some penetrating oil in this or something just to get it loose. There we go. I honestly don't expect that to help too much, but it might. It's kind of, it's not dissolving it, but being wet with oil is kind of making it appear less bad. Okay, so based on the manual, looks like the pin is supposed to go out that way because they point at taking it out from here, but I don't know. I seriously kind of doubt it, so I'm going to try pushing it that way. No, uh, try pushing it the other way. I know you're not, it's not, it's not a good idea to hit, to hit on this. But I might do it. Yeah, so just a little bit. I'm not going to go crazy with it. I'm just going to see if it'll move when I tap, tap it with a punch. I'm not really sure, to be honest. Although it does look like maybe it's not supposed to go out that way because there's a thing blocking it. So maybe it comes out this way. I think it did move, so I think that's what I'm going to go with. Very carefully. Um, I'm going to use a nail because this is steel and it's not small enough to go through that hole. Here's a little bitty nail. I went ahead and flattened the tip a little bit so it's not jagged or sharp, I mean. And I'm going to see if I can poke this through. These nails are pretty easy to bend, so it's unlikely that it will damage it. Is moving just a little bit very slowly there we go that pin has popped out so I'm gonna have to hit it though because it's in there pretty good a tiny bit more keep on going there we go it really likes to be hammered on though but at this point, it's out enough that I think I can grab it with some pliers carefully and just pull it out. Yeah, there we go. That might have not been the greatest idea because it's kind of might have messed up the surface a little bit, but I can get some steel wool and make that better. Uh, I don't think it did any permanent damage, but this pin goes in this way like that so I'll put it down here and the float comes off where is the needle valve this thing is rusted it's gone uh, whatever this piece underneath it is it's like there's a piece of metal here and it's just not there anymore so I really don't know yeah so I guess the next thing to do would be to pull the needle valve out which is here uh, yeah whatever that that uses for leverage is just rusted it's dead it's gone uh, the only problem with this is that there's junk inside that screw hole uh, it's rusted into it I don't think the screw itself is damaged it's just full of trash what is this I don't even know what this is where, uh, yeah, I don't know. Is this like part of a jet? Uh, maybe? I honestly have no idea what this was. <laughs> so I'm going to see if I can pull this out. Easier said than done, obviously. Oh, it, it broke loose. It's awesome. I think <laughs> this this is getting worse and worse every the, the further I go. 
honestly. So this screw right here is actually okay. Um, however, whatever it was holding on, I don't even see it. I think that was it. Okay, so apparently this little thing is the needle, needle valve. No idea how I'm going to get that out, because it is rusted in there. Except maybe just poking around it. Maybe that'll come out if I use uh, some small pliers. I don't know. Yeah, these should work. Um, this is obviously not going to be reused, so I don't care about damaging it. There we go. Came out anyway, so that's fine. Uh, I'll just put it there for safekeeping. But Next, I think, is... I don't really know. Like, look, look, this is the float, the needle valve. I guess it just pushed down on it. So like, like sat, yeah, this little thing sat on that, I guess, and it just pushed it. Or maybe there's another piece that is missing. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm honestly not even sure at this point, but let's, let's keep going. I think the main jet is the thing that comes out next, which is this um, hexagonal shaped jet. Let's grab a socket that fits it, or a wrench or something. Here we have a six millimeter that just fits over it. Five millimeters too small, so that's good. So this should just screw right out. Yeah, just like that. Probably almost could have done that by hand. So there's the main, part of the main jet anyway. There we go. Uh, this one right here is called the slow jet. So I will take it out. It has a nice deep groove for a screwdriver, which is nice. Nice is a word I would not use to describe 95% of this carburetor, <laughs> except for the outside, really. Uh, the slow jet has this rusted thing around it. I don't know what it is, but I'll put it here. And this piece is rusted completely to crap. Uh, the rest of the main jet is in here somewhere. But we need to take this, this metal plate out, I think. Or do we? I'm not sure. Definitely this main jet will be, this is, this has, I see now it has a, a hex shape to it. So I'll go ahead and scrape some of that rust off and see if we can get to it. What? Yeah, I'm just going to destroy that because it's gone. This is the definition of gone for some <laughs> for some of these parts. Yeah. I don't know if I'll be able to find all the parts I need to get this thing working again. Um, but then the other thing is I can't really find this carburetor. So we'll just have to cross our fingers that we we'll get it. Is this a, like a 10? That's too big. It's more like an 8. Yeah, I think that's an 8. It's got to be. So this is another part to the main jet. It's really stuck on there good. Okay, that came loose. Surprisingly well. All, this, all these pieces so far that need to come loose have come loose easily. Comparatively speaking, uh, to what you would might think they should be. Okay. Look 
looks like there is a uh, whatchamacallit or these uh, locking tab to it which needs to be replaced because it's rusted so I'll put that there um, this goes in there so I'll just kind of screw it in just because and the last thing I think is these two little screws if you could call them screws anymore that just have rust everywhere and this should hopefully come out with a Phillips head yep uh, this one needs some more dirt taken out that one up. Uh, let me try again. No, that's not coming off. It's turning. Yay. Very hard to turn. Okay. So we need to keep these separate. This is the float needle thing. This is this metal plate, whatever it is. This one. Just screw it out all the way. This one has a washer. Where did the other one? There's the other one. This one looks like it still has somewhat of a washer. So, put these here. And this plate, whatever it is, here. Oh, uh, that thing came off and it broke. So, I mean, it was already broken. Yes, yeah, so whatever that plate was, uh, we need a new one. I hope the kit, rebuild kit, comes with one, with one, but I seriously doubt it. So, I'm just. Ugh, I don't know. All right, uh, that is this thing totally totally disassembled, I believe. So, yeah, that's fun. Um, as far as I know, that's all the jets. That's a uh, pilot jet, or no, uh, slow jet, uh, main jet, pilot jet, uh, needle jet, main jet. Ah, there is one last jet. It looks like the starter jet what it's called and it's in here and I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that because it's look it's just full of junk but apparently there's supposed to be something in there ah there is another jet it looks like some kind of air jet thing it's up in here in the body I should be able to get it flathead yeah just like that so I'll have to keep this separate because that is a totally different jet okay there we go that's a jet it goes on the outside so I will actually keep this on the outside part all right, next step is, I guess, cleaning these in the ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, I don't know if I want to take maybe the body pieces first uh, and do that just to see how they come out. And then the rest of it, that's probably what I'll do because I don't want to get junk all over everything and then lose pieces, so yeah. All right, here is the pine saw. And here's the ultrasonic cleaner with mostly water in it. I'm going to fill it up to about the top of the basket.
going to take more than I thought. That's good enough for now. And we're going to put these in here. And I guess it would help if I took the rubber out. It wouldn't hurt it, but I don't need it. So I'm going to get it out. Yeah, you know what, this thing is in there pretty good, so it's not going to hurt the rubber. Not that I care, because I'm replacing it, but um, I'm just going to dunk it in there, and hopefully it'll loosen it up enough by the time it's done. So, we'll uh, this in here, like that, put the body, uh, focusing on the, the really bad part at the bottom. Mostly. So then uh, I think the lid will go on. And I will heat it up. Yeah, it, it won't be perfect, but heat it up. Once I plug it in and turn it on for about 20 minutes, and I'll see how it does. Alright, so update. Uh, I pulled these out. I got them pretty clean, but as you can see, uh, apparently it ate the brass off of these fittings, which is not good. Um, and honestly, this, it's still not free of corrosion. It's going to corrode again. Um, so I found another carburetor on eBay for like 55 bucks. Um, what I'm probably going to do is buy it because, let me show you really quick. This piece, uh, the jet holder, whatever you call it, is rusted to crap. I could buy one on CMSNL, but I already put in a giant order. Uh, this piece is whatever, the, the little thing that, flip that hold pulls on the on the needle jet it doesn't even have a part number you can't really buy it so really my only option is to either try to get this one working which I mean that's still pretty bad and obviously I, I don't like the fact that it ate the the brass um, so I kind of I mean they're not I wouldn't say they're totally ruined because of that they're pretty far gone to begin with um, but some of these pieces are good like the choke is good this piece you might be able to save, I don't know. Uh, the screws are good, the jets are probably good. Uh, they'll need to clean them in something other than pine saw. So for me, it's a no-go on pine saw, as long as you have brass anywhere in there. Uh, I don't know what the deal is. People have used it, and usually what people do is they put it straight in there. I diluted it even. And still, it's like, uh, it screwed it up. So I don't know what the deal is and how people are using pine saw with uh, brass. I mean, there, I know every pretty much every carburetor has has brass. Maybe theirs aren't copper underneath. I don't know, but that's just that sucks. Although this this thing in here is still kind of copper. I don't know if you can see it. I mean, uh, brass. Um, maybe it's not brass plated. But anyway, yeah, that really sucks on a lot in a lot of ways but it's a good thing in some ways because uh, normally these carburetors either you can't find or maybe I just I probably just wasn't looking right uh, they're like two hundred dollars for a not great one like probably maybe half as bad as this one so to find a good one that's 55 bucks heck yeah you can't beat that so I'm gonna see if I can clean this up or at least get the pine saw off of it I didn't do too bad on this part but anyway yeah I'm gonna go clean that up and I'll be right back and I'll I'll probably go and order that that carburetor and I'll take it apart in another video so yeah that's essentially this video is going to be um, just taking apart a really really nasty carburetor and not doing anything else with it so yeah uh, hopefully this video was helpful somehow um, even though we didn't get a whole lot done uh, but yeah I'll see you guys in the next video bye